G'day, my name's Tomo and welcome to another episode of Tomo's Tune-Ups. On this episode, I'm gonna show you how to install a set of piston rings to a piston, install a conrod, and attach it to the crankshaft. So we're not here to spiders, so let's get straight to it. So here we have our piston. It is also denoted by the dot at the front in which we're gonna be placing towards the front of the crankshaft pulley. And it also has on there, it is a plus 40 thou oversized piston. So what we need to do is determine which piston ring goes first. As you can see, this one has a light chamfered edge on each side, so that's our middle compression ring. This one here is completely solid and is our top compression ring. So we're gonna be fitting that one at the very top. Now, we also have our oil control rings at the bottom here and our oil scraper. So that goes on last. You can put on first depending on what you wanna do. So this is the method that I choose to do. Now you can get piston ring tools in which help you to install the piston rings. What I'm gonna be doing is getting a pair of circlet pliers. You just wanna be really, really careful with it just to make sure that you don't overstretch them and that you damage the piston ring itself. What we're gonna be doing is laying it on its side just so I can get it started, you guys can see. I'm just gonna re-spread those apart. And then just gonna sit there, and just slowly, slowly work it apart just a little bit more and then just work it down. So I just have to get over that edge. All right, so now we are in the first piston ring groove, which is not where we wanna be. We wanna be in the second one. So because it's now moved into the first piston ring, it's not where we wanna be. I'm just gonna grab my circlet pliers and just separate them just a little bit, just to get it over that lip. And then we're gonna move it onto the second one. Now these can be quite fiddly and will take you a couple of goes, but just be super patient with it. And just, as I said, don't overstretch it. Now we have it out of the groove. So what we're gonna be doing is just working around slowly and pushing it into that second groove. What I generally like to do is grab a small flat blade screwdriver and just very gently, just move it across and just push it into the second ring gap. As you can see, that's just snapped directly into that first ring gap. So it's not where you need it to be. You can generally just give a bit of a wiggle and she'll come straight out. Now, I've managed to literally just fluke that and get it out where I need it to be and push it into the second one. Now, because it's overthrown and gone to the third one, we just gotta be really careful, push it in there. So we have number two ring installed. Next one is the top compression ring. So we're gonna do the same thing again. I was just gonna do it on the side, but it's probably easier just to do it from the top just to show you guys. So very gently, just spread it apart, get it over that lip and just fit it just like that. That way it's in there, it's moving freely and it is supported by the groove itself. So last thing we need to do is the last ring. So exactly the same again, we're gonna grab our circlet pliers. We're just gonna separate them just a little bit. I'll just move it so you can see with the camera. Just a little bit of, and doogling, spread it apart, get it over the lip. Sometimes this works a treat and goes first time, others you just have to sit there and just fiddle with it just a little bit. So once you've got it started, do the exact same thing again. Now what I like to do is put this ring just on this side here, so just below number two compression ring. The reason for that is you'll see a little bit later on, when we go to fit the oil control ring inside here, if you put the ring inside here and then try to fit this, it's generally quite tight. So I generally do it uh, and move it all the way up here first and then bring it back down once it's in there. That just makes it a little bit easier to install. So let's just grab that, just drag it up a little bit, just nice and easy. Okay, just try the other side because it's got a bit of a step. Okay, oh. Now these, it's causing some really light scuff marks. It's not gonna be the end of the piston by any means, simply because the pressure is gonna be on the rings itself. So it's not going to determine um, any loss of pressure, nor is it gonna perform any differently. So just move it up here, move it up there. All right, so it's now in the ring gap. What we're gonna be doing is doing the same thing again, just overthrowing it just up above there, grabbing your small screwdriver and just gently levering it up at the top, 
and moving it all the way around. Once it's all the way around and you're happy with it, you can then reinstall the oil control ring. Okay. So once it's like that, grab your oil control ring, doesn't matter which way it goes, there is no denotion as to whether it's top or bottom, inside or out, well I guess inside and out, that would be silly. So that's just in there like that. Now what we're going to do is just grab our fingernail and we're just going to slide it down just a little bit just so it seats in there and just sits on top of that scraper just there. So as you can see it's in there nice and firm up against the top part. Now the last step is to grab the bottom one. Now some piston rings are denoted whether they be top or bottom. So it might have a dot on it, it might say top or it might have a specific way in which it faces. So it's worthwhile double checking with your manufacturer's specifications or even the workshop manual and consult it to see which way it goes if you're using genuine parts or with the manufacturer of the supplier. And like I said, those marks aren't going to cause any significant problems because it's only moving up and down the piston. You can just run your finger along there and it, yeah, it does have a little bit of a lip, but it's not going to be the end of the world. Like I said, the only place that's going to be contacting the actual sleeve is going to be the piston rings. Now, the next step we need to do is offset the piston rings. Failure to do so will cause excessive blow-by and excessive oil consumption. So what I like to do is look at the pistons, that way the numbers are facing me. So in our case, I can read that that says 40 thou. The first piston ring, I'm going to stick off to the 10 o'clock position. The second piston ring, I'm going to put to the 2 o'clock position. And the third piston ring, or oil control ring, I'm going to rotate it around and offset both top and bottom oil control rings. So, you may not be able to see here, but the gap is at the bottom just there. We're going to find where the top ring is here of the oil control ring, and I'm just going to flip that 180 compared to where it is. So it's going to be on the other side of where the gudgeon pin sits. Slowly rotate it all the way around. Fantastic, and that's it. So here's our clock. We have 12 o'clock, 6, 3, and 9. So first one is at approximately 10 o'clock. Second one is approximately two o'clock, which is just here. And the third one is at the six o'clock position and then flipped on the other side, it is at the 12 o'clock position. So we are halfway there. Next thing we need to do is grab our gudgeon pin. Now we need to make sure that that's gonna fit before we install it. So just give it a little bit of a wiggle. Sometimes they're a little bit firm and you just have to give it that little bit of a push. That moved in there quite freely. We need to also know how does the gudgeon pin get held in there. In our case, it is going to be by using a circlip. So we're gonna grab our circlip pliers and we're going to install it in one side and then we're going to install it in the other side. So just push it in until it seats in its groove once you're confident it's in there, you can then release the pliers. Now, Tomo's tech tip, like I've told you here before, is when you're putting in a circlip, just move it around in its home, just make sure that it's properly seated in there. In this case, we can see it quite easily that it's seated and doesn't need to move up and down any further. So once you're happy with it, we can then fit the gudgeon pin. But before we do, we need to make sure that we fit the con rod in the correct manner. All right, so just checking which way the throw goes of the piston, I need to make sure that I have the offset con rod facing this side here. So once it's in the car, this is facing the distributor cap. So as you can see, it is not completely symmetrical, both top and bottom. So it has an offset leg just here compared to this side. So the offset needs to be on this side. So we need to undo the con rod cap. So we're just gonna break it apart and then put it aside. Now these are actually dotted on either side. Hopefully you can see the light is a little bit bright, but just where my two fingers are, there are four dots here and there's four dots here. That way we know it is cylinder number four. Before we go any further, we need to make sure we install the Conrod bearings or little end bearings. These bearings need to go in dry and they need to also go in one particular manner. So it has a little notch cut out here and it has a notch cut out on the bearing itself. So that'll just sit directly in there Give it a push until it's home. Once it's home, you can then fit it on the opposite side. Fantastic, once that's fitted, we're then gonna grab some assembly lubricant, grab a little bit on our finger and just smear it here. That way it just creates a little bit of a film so when it starts up, it's not gonna create any friction between two of the surfaces. Now also, it's really good to know that this stuff, this is CRC engine assembly lubricants, that when it starts up, this will dissipate and go into the engine oil and it's not going to contaminate it whatsoever or do any damage to it. So next step is to align the conrod inside the piston, grab the gudgeon pin. You can lubricate it if you like, you don't necessarily have to. Give it a bit of a wiggle. 
line up the gudgeon pin, slide it all the way through until it comes to a complete stop, and then install the circlip on the back side of the piston. All right, now I'm confident that he's in there properly, so I'm just gonna straighten the back up because I'm a little bit OCD. Double check it, make sure she's in there nice and snug, which it appears to be. And then we're right for install. Now remember also the gudgeon pin will float, so the con rod will move back and forth just like that. And before we install it, we also need to grab ourselves a little cap full of oil. So what we need to do, dip your finger in there and just lubricate the new piston and the piston rings itself. This will enable it to go in a little bit smoother and as the engine warms up, it'll also burn it off. So it's just ensuring that it's not gonna go in dry and it's also not gonna hurt it as well. So next part is we're gonna come over to the engine block. We're also gonna grab our little container of oil and we're going to lightly lubricate the cylinder wall. Once again, just helps it go in and make it go nice and easy with no dramas of any other rings catching whatsoever. Remember that this will also burn off as well upon first startup. Might blow a little bit of smoke until it burns off, but it's not gonna cause any major dramas. All right, so next step, once you've fitted the piston ring compressor, is to reinstall the piston. So we have the dots facing this way. So this dot here is gonna be facing this way here. Now, grab yourself a soft face hammer or even just a piece of timber and we're going to push it down from the top. All right, so in my case, I'm just using a dead blow hammer, just going to use the handle of it, drive it down until the skirt starts to go inside the cylinder wall itself. That'll just locate it to where we need it to be. And then piece by piece, I'm going to push it all the way down. Once it's seated all the way home, all we then need to do is flip it over and tighten up the conrod bearing. So because I had my wheat bigs this morning, I'm not even gonna worry about using the tool to help rotate it. All I'm gonna do is just flip it upside down, put the pin in, and then we're gonna tighten it. All right, so as you can see, the conrod is attached to the crankshaft now. We're gonna grab our conrod cap, make sure that we line up both of the dots on either side so it goes in the right way. That's gonna slide on there like that. You're gonna grab your two conrod bolts, tighten them up by hand. All right, so I've started these bolts by hand. I'm just using the ratchet to help aid the installation because it is a little bit slow without using it. Okay, so next step from here is to grab yourself a torque wrench. You don't need anything fancy. This snap-on one is about uh, nearly two decades old. I've had this since I was a first year apprentice because it was one of the tools that my teacher taught me to get. So what we're gonna do now is just tighten them both up. This one is 35 foot pound. So I always like to just double check it. So we go, we tighten it up. Once you hear it click and beep, double check. And we're gonna go back over and double check the conrod bolts. Tomo's tech tip, the last one is, I'll just grab a blue marker or even just a white out Sharpie, whatever it is, and just mark the bolts. That way you know that you've tightened it up. Well, folks, that's it for this episode. I hope you guys learned something and enjoyed it. There is plenty more to come on this engine and how to assemble an engine every single step of the way. So make sure that when you do this job, you follow the manufacturer's specifications to the absolute T and anything that it recommends doing, make sure you follow that. This is a crucial part of the engine building. If you get this wrong, you're only gonna know when you go to start it up. So along the entire process step of the way, make sure you follow every single step. Don't miss anything. And if you're unsure, seek either professional advice or consult an owner's manual. And like always guys, stay COVID safe. We'll see you right here on another episode of Tomo's Tune-Ups.